Hello, Rivermont family. It's Pastor Brett with today's Pastor's Devotional. We are in the midst of an Advent devotional series aimed at helping us celebrate Christ's first coming. In particular, we're examining the Old Testament, and it's pointing to our need for a Savior, the provision of that Savior, and the coming of that Savior. Today, we'll delve into the Old Testament Passover to see how this informs both our Advent celebrations and our expectations. We'll see how this event foreshadowed both the need for a Savior as well as God's provision of a Savior. So, a quick review is in order. You'll remember in Exodus that God sent Moses to Pharaoh to ask for the release of the people from their slavery. Each time Pharaoh refused, God sent a plague upon the land of Egypt. Each plague was an attack on one of Egypt's gods because Pharaoh refused to acknowledge Moses' as God. They were a show of God's superior power. However, instead of the plagues putting the fear of God into Pharaoh's heart, they only served to harden his heart. Nine requests to free the people were met with resounding no's, and nine times the land of Egypt was visited by a plague that subjected Pharaoh and his people to misery. A tenth time Moses went to Pharaoh to ask for the people's release. This time the stakes were life and death, for the firstborn in all of Egypt. Notice it wasn't just the firstborn of the Egyptians, but all those living in Egypt. That included the Israelites as well. In Exodus 12, God makes a provision for His people to be spared from this judgment. Because sin demands atonement by sacrifice, God told the people to provide for their house a sacrificial lamb that was one year old male without blemish. On the appointed day, they were to kill the lamb and put the blood of the lamb onto the doorpost and lintel of their house. In verse 12, God says that the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now, we often think of the blood only as a sign to God that they are covered that when he set out to execute his judgment of killing the firstborn, he would pass over their house. But God says the blood was a sign for the people. But what did the blood signify to the people? Namely, that through faith in God's word, they belonged to him. They were his people. He was ransoming them from their captivity. He was setting them free so that they could serve and worship the Lord freely. The blood also served as a seal of the Lord's protection when He executed His judgment. It meant that they were safe. And while this blood sacrifice spared them from God's immediate judgment, it did not spare them from God's final judgment. The sacrifice of a lamb was insufficient to take away the sins of the world fully and finally. They needed, and we needed, more than a lamb. We needed someone who was human, someone who was like us and who could live a spotless life, one who was without blemish, who was without sin. We needed a Savior, and that Savior was Jesus Christ. Like Pharaoh and all of Egypt, we too have rebelled against God's commands. We have hardened our heart towards Him and sinned against Him. The Bible tells us the penalty of our sin is death. And yet God, in His rich mercy, offers salvation to us like He did for the Israelites in Egypt. He sent to us Jesus, whom John identifies as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is our ultimate Passover Lamb who willingly sacrificed His life to atone for our sin. He substituted His life for our life to set us free from sin's captivity and judgment so that we could be free to worship and serve the Lord all the days of our life and on into eternity. Jesus was born that man no more may die, but it meant His own death as our Passover lamb. May His shed blood on the cross be a sign to us that if we believe and trust in Him, we will be saved and will belong to Him forever. Let's pray. Father, thank You for this glorious truth that Jesus was in fact our Passover lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. Lord, we thank you that that sacrifice was a complete one, that there's nothing else left to do. May we rejoice in that complete sacrifice even as we celebrate Christ's birth this Christmas. We pray in Christ's name. 
Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen.